It's Monday. On Sunday, Jesus rode into Jerusalem as the humble, peace-bringing son of David. On Monday, he enters the temple. The temple would have been buzzing with people who were frantically preparing for the Passover feast. Now, to understand what Jesus was about to do, it helps to understand how people viewed the temple in those days. Rebuilt by Zerubbabel around 538 BC and lavishly improved by Herod the Great, the temple had become one of the most impressive architectural marvels in Judea. With its marble white stones, it could be seen by pilgrims from miles away. The temple was so impressive that people from the surrounding nations, like the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts, came to Jerusalem just to see the temple's beauty, just to hear the songs that were sung. To the Jews, the temple was a visible representation of their connection to God. Now, sadly, even something as beautiful as a reminder of God's presence, the temple itself could become an idol, and as an idol, it would fail to do its purpose. The temple was originally meant to be a place where God's people would meet, and as they met, the nations would gather to hear from the Lord as well. It was a blessing meant not just for Israel, but for all nations. Isaiah 56, verse 7, describes the temple as a gathering place where the nations would come to God's holy mountain to joyfully worship and pray to him. However, when Jesus came to the temple, he did not find the nations praying. Instead, he found a bunch of greedy money changers turning the temple court into a marketplace. In their greed, they had marketed a relationship with God as if it was something to be bought. The house of prayer had been diminished to become a den of robbers. In the process, their money tables were taking up the very space intended for the nations to come and seek the Lord. Naturally, Jesus was outraged. John's gospel says that zeal for the Lord's house consumed him, and he began flipping tables and beating out the money changers. His actions are negative attention from the Jewish leaders. They openly questioned what right he had to do what he was doing, to which he answered, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. His response is amazing for two reasons. First, in saying this, Jesus claims to be the new connection point to God. No longer will the nations need to come to a physical building made of marble stones to meet with the Lord. Instead, Jesus himself has become the gathering place of God's people and their link to heaven. Second, in addition to calling himself the temple, Jesus also gives insight into what he's about to do. The religious leaders are going to kill him, and in doing so, they will destroy the true temple. But in three days, Jesus will raise up the ruined temple, his body, by raising from the dead. Of course, no one at the time fully understood what Jesus meant until after his resurrection. With money on the ground, with overturned tables, and Jerusalem's religious authority spitting venom, Jesus went back to his redemptive work. Matthew says, And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. You need to understand, this is no small detail. Like everything Jesus does, it is highly symbolic. And in this case, it symbolizes the restoration that is coming through him. According to the law of Moses, the blind and the lame were ritually unclean, and therefore they were unable to approach God in the temple. They simply could not come near to him in his holy place. God loved them, he provided for them, but still nothing that was physically blemished could come into his holy presence. This sets up the hope throughout the whole Old Testament in which the prophets envisioned a day when everyone, even uh, the blind, even the lame, the blind would have their eyes open, the lame would have their legs working, they would leap like deer into Zion with singing. Even the blind and the lame would be able to come near and enjoy the presence of God. In Isaiah 56, the very same passage Jesus quoted in his rebuke, God promises to gather the outcast of Israel to himself. By healing the blind and the lame in the temple, Jesus gathers the outcasts and gives them an entirely new life, opening their eyes and helping them walk. And in the process, he's announcing to everyone that the age of restoration is about to begin. 
fallen humanity's separation from God is over, and those who were once far off can be brought near to enjoy his holy, good presence. Mm-hmm.